Round 2, A Naruto Time Travel Story Chapter 3 Manipulating the Future Kurama relaxed in his cage, sitting on his haunches. He looked in front of him to see Uchiha Sasuke and Hiruno Sakura hanging onto his every word. He inwardly grinned. Finally, the truth will be revealed and he hoped that this sharing of trust would prove valuable to their mission. In order for you to understand my presence during the battle between Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara in a place now called the Valley of the End, you need to know the history of the Bijou and how we came to be. Kurama started telling his story. You may ask your questions once I am done and I will hold nothing of the truth from you except those that I deem too personal for you to know. Agreed? Seeing two nods, Kurama started his story. Before the shinobi world came to be, even before the elemental nations came about, the world was plagued by a powerful force, a primordial evil called the Jubi. Th this powerful force of darkness terrorized the world, raising and destroying everything in its path until one man blessed with the eyes of Kami appeared and put an end to its rampage. Using the power of the Rinnegan, the most powerful jujitsu in the world, the Rakuto Sanin battled the Jubi on equal terms, both not budging an inch in their struggle days the battle waged, the face of the land being reformed with their power. However, in a desperate attempt to end the Jubi's rampage, the Rakuto Sanin used the power of his eyes to seal the power and soul of monster within himself while imprisoning its body in a tomb in the sky, the moon. Thus the legendary Rakuto Sanin became the first Jinchuriki. Years passed as the Rakuto Sanin traveled while holding the power of Jubi at bay. Thanks to the powers gifted to him by Kami, he did this easily as he shared the secrets of Chakra to the world, giving birth to the Shinobi nations and the elemental countries. T time went on and the Rakuto Sanin gave birth to three sons. These three sons were given a part of his power. The eldest was given his eyes, the middle was given his calming presence, the youngest, however, was given his body's vitality. This gave birth to the three great clans, the Uchiha, the Senju, and the Uzumaki. Uchiha and Senju didn't see eye to eye because of their beliefs despite the teachings of their father. The Uchiha believed that peace can be acquired through power. Senju believed that peace comes if people love and care for each other. Uzumaki backed Senju in this, starting the rift. The brothers went their separate ways, each building their respective clans as what you see today. When the Rakuto Sanin was on death's doorstep, he knew that if he died, the Jubi would be released. To avoid such catastrophe, he used his godly powers to create nine bodies and separated the Jubi's power and placed them into these bodies before breathing life into them. Thus the tailed beasts were born. Kurama paused in his speech and looked at the captivated audience below him. Even his partner didn't know the truth and this was like hitting two birds with one stone. He grinned. Let's move time forward to the battle of Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara. Unlike popular beliefs, I didn't aid Madara in attacking the Shodame. In fact, I was brought under his control using the power of the Sharingan, a mutation of the Rakuto Sinan's gift to his eldest son. While Hashirama had the power to suppress Abiju's energy, gaining control of them by inhibiting their lust for battle, Uchiha Madara's eyes had the power to place a powerful Jinjutsu on Abiju, letting them feel rage and bloodlust, thus gaining control of us through our primal instinct. The battle raged on but the Shodame was able to destroy the connection between me and Madara, breaking his control over me. As I gained my sanity, Uzumaki Mito used a powerful sealing technique to imprison me inside her body, making her my first Jinchuriki. Madara was defeated and unlike popular beliefs, he is still alive. This revelation shocked Sasuke and Sakura, but Naruto already know this. Thankfully, the two didn't say anything but continued to listen to Kurama's story. Mito knew that Madara was still alive and if I was ever released upon her death, then there was nothing stopping the Uchiha Patriarch in controlling me again. Such is the case, she summoned another Uzumaki to become the next Jinchuriki. Thus, Uzumaki Kushina came into the scene. When Kushina gave birth to Naruto, all of her energy was diverted to childbirth, causing the seal holding me inside her to weaken. 
However, the Yandame and Sandame Hokage use their chakra to strengthen the seal, ensuring that I stay inside and away from Madara's reach. However, Madara learned of the location and immediately attacked. While everyone was concentrating on Kushina, Madara took Naruto as hostage, threatening to kill him if they so much as move and strengthen the seal holding me at bay. However, the Yandame attacked the man using his famed technique and Naruto was freed from his clutches. But, this gave Madara an opening to yank me out, causing me to appear outside of Kanoha before he appeared and took control of me once again. This is the reason why I attacked Kanoha for the second time. However, the Yandame already hatched a plan and with Kushina's permission, used Naruto and Uzumaki descended to become the third Jinchuriki. However, the Yandame took it one step further. Since he knew Madara was still alive, he made sure that Kanoha would have a surprise if the man decided to appear. He used the forbidden Shiki Fujin to summon the Shinigami as a catalyst to the ceiling. He let the Shinigami devour my Yin Chakra while sealing my Yang Chakra into Naruto. However, I was still under the throes of Madara's control so I immediately attacked Naruto upon his command. However, the Yandame and Kushina used their bodies to shield Naruto from my attack, getting impaled in the process. Kushina materialized her special chakra chains to subdue me once again. With that, the Yandame finished the sealing process and completely placed me inside Naruto. He turned to Sasuke who now had tears flowing down his face. Sakura was bawling her eyes out, hugging Naruto for all she was worth. Kurama was inwardly happy that Naruto found true friends in this timeline. Uchiha Kurama called Sasuke's attention. Madara is still alive. I am sure and I will bet all my tales that he had something to do with the clan being massacred. I don't know the truth, but I am sure that your brother knows. If you want to know the reason why your clan is gone, seek Itachi out. However, do so with your friends beside you and they will make sure that you'll be successful in this endeavor. Sasuke stayed rooted on the spot, his face and eyes a myriad of emotions due to the revelation. However, these emotions disappeared to be replaced by a determination that rivaled Naruto's will of fire. He placed a fist on his chest and looked at Kurama's eyes without fear. You have my promise, Kyubisama. I pledge that I will remain true to my brother, Naruto, and sister, Sakura. I will seek Itachi and learn the truth why my family was wiped out. I promise that I will not fall into darkness, but I will rely on my own power and the strength given to me by my friends to see this done. Sasuke declared. He was vaguely aware of Naruto and Sakura flanking him, a hand on each of his shoulders. All three of them looked at Kurama with determination, sealing their pledge good. I hate all Uchiha, but seeing you stick to my container proved your worth to me. You might be the first Uchiha to gain my respect. Listen well, Uchiha Sasuke, stick to your pledge and I will always be there along with my container to aid you in your struggles. Break the pledge and I will destroy you when I am free from my partner's hold. This I promise. Sasuke didn't flinch at the threat, but simply nodded, his determination growing stronger than ever. Now that you know the whole story, if you have questions, this is the time to ask them. I can't maintain this connection long without your body being harmed. Only Naruto is immune to my chakra being my container and an Uzumaki. Kurama informed them. Speak your questions, Sakura, Sasuke. Do you know who Naruto's father is? Sakura asked immediately, gripping Naruto's hand with her own. She didn't see Naruto's shocked expression because she was staring intently at the bijou in front of her. Kurama looked at her, spotting Naruto's expression, before shaking his head. No, I don't, Haruno Sakura. The seal Mito applied on Kushina ensured that I am not aware of the outside world. I don't know who Naruto's father is, but I'm sure the time will come when this truth will be revealed, said Kurama while giving Naruto a pointed look. Naruto glared at his partner for putting him in this predicament before looking at the faces of his surrogate brother and sister. He knew that the two suspected that he knew. He sighed. Yes, I do know who my father is. Naruto said before a wry smile appeared on his face. 
After all, the Yandame wouldn't be much of a Hokage if he chose another to contain Kyuubi if not his own son. Why you're the Yandame's son? asked Sakura while Sasuke was giving the blonde a look. Take away the whisker marks and you definitely get the Yandame. Sasuke said while nodding. Sakura raised an eyebrow at him. Duh, check the Hokage monument and look at Naruto. I'm sure you see the resemblance. Besides, there are only two blondes in Kanoha, the Yandame and the Yamanakas. I think we all know which one Naruto hailed from. Smart, team. Naruto said with a smirk before his face turned serious. I hope you keep this information, guys. The Sandame doesn't know that I know about my parents and QB. As far as he's concerned, I'm just a clueless academy student. Fine. We will keep your secret. Besides, IWA would practically declare an all-out war with Kanoha if they found out that the Yandame had a son. Sakura said dryly causing Naruto to look at her incredulously. IWA was the hardest hit during the Third Shinobi War. The Yandame used his Hiroshin to decimate Iwa's ranks. As far as history is concerned, they have a grudge against him and that grudge will surely extend to you if they find out you're his son. He has a point there partner. Fine. Naruto all but growled causing the fox to snicker. Why do you call Naruto your partner? asked Sasuke, no longer afraid of the bijou who was being friendly with them. Easy. He has my respect. Kurama said with a smirk. I don't hate him and he doesn't hate me despite the fact that I was the reason that his parents are dead and the villagers treating him like trash. In truth, he blames Madara for everything that happened to him. I respect him because despite the villagers' hatred, he persevered and still maintained his determination and the Shodane's fabled wool of fire. Also, the Shinigami and Yandame seal ensured that we will be together forever until the day he dies. If Naruto dies, then I die with him with me going straight into the Shinigami's stomach. That is how the seal works. Instead of fighting him, I'd rather help my host become the strongest he could be. Thanks. Naruto said with a grin. You're welcome, Naruto, said Kurama, returning the grin. Now, our time is at an end. Your bodies need to stop its contact with my chakra. If you have any questions, tell Naruto. I will answer through him. Farewell for now. With that, Kurama ended the connection causing the two to disappear, leaving Naruto behind. Thanks, Kurama. I know I said this once before, but I'll say this again. I'm glad that it was you that was sealed in me, my friend. You're welcome, Naruto. Kurama said with a warm smile before Naruto left his mind to join his friends in the physical world. Naruto felt as if the weight of the world was lifted from his shoulder after Kurama revealed the truth to his two friends, no, siblings. When he returned to the waking world, Sasuke and Sakura immediately bombarded him with questions, mostly concerning the abilities he got from housing the Kyuubi no Yoko. With Kurama's prompting to proceed, he explained to the both of them his abilities when using the fox's chakra. He even demonstrated his Jinchuriki mode up to four tails. He told them that he couldn't go any higher because the Kyuubi's potent chakra would be felt all throughout the village. Sakura immediately told him to stop using Kyuubi's chakra since she didn't want Naruto's relationship with his bijou to be revealed and make things worse for him. He also showed them his chakra shroud, an ability he gained for being Kurama's host. The two sparred with Naruto with his shroud activated, the blonde enjoying it and he knew that his siblings did as well. All three of them knew that their training would be taking up a notch after this event. They all have their own reasons for getting stronger, and all three of them would be together as they do that. They ended the day with the three of them going back to the Uchiha compound for a well-deserved rest. It had been a long and tiring day thanks to the truths they heard, and the trio was glad that it ended with all of them in good spirits and their bond as pseudo-siblings stronger than ever. Sarutobi Hiruzen, the Sandame Hokage, was watching the villagers go through their daily lives from behind the window of his office high on top of the Hokage Tower. Despite being free of paperwork for the day, a rarity of days in his book, he couldn't help but feel a bit anxious. 
The reason was his surrogate grandson, Uzumaki Naruto. It had been roughly three years since he couldn't find a peep of the boy using his crystal ball and a spying jutsu. He would still come and visit for a brief talk, get his orphan allowance, or just to hang out, but any time he wanted to check on the boy, it's like Naruto disappeared off the grid. He placed a targeting seal of the boy's clothes so he could find him anywhere in the village to monitor his well-being, and if caught in bad time, whisk him out to safety before the villagers could sink their claws into him. However, one day three years ago, he couldn't find the boy no matter how much he tried. It was a week and a few hours that his spying technique failed to find the boy unless he wanted to be found that he ordered one of his trusted umbu, Dog, to find the Naruto. Thankfully, the boy was safe in his apartment reading a book. Of course, he immediately visited Naruto to find him just the way his dog described, reading a book. Hiruzen noticed that there was something different about his surrogate grandson. One indicator was that the boy was sitting down and reading a book in his couch for hours without fidgeting. Everyone knew that Uzumaki Naruto was a stamina freak and staying in one place for too long was impossible for the energetic boy. Other reasons also screamed at him as well, like how clean the boy's apartment was, the small number of ramen cups on the boy's cupboard, healthy food on the cabinets, and so on. Heck, the boy was even wearing dark-colored clothes, and the lack of orange definitely alarmed him. No wonder he couldn't find him through his crystal ball. Naruto was no longer wearing the shirts with the seal on them. He couldn't place a seal on the boy's clothes since it would be quite obvious and he didn't want to alert his surrogate grandson that he was being spied on. After interviewing the boy, he couldn't help but be proud of Naruto's growth. It would seem that the blonde finally lived up to his potential. Considering who his parents were, it was impossible for Naruto to be otherwise. It would seem that the boy loved to read and the lady in charge of the library often told him how Naruto would spend hours reading various books ranging from general subjects to the basics of shinobi arts. However, this report didn't coincide with what happened in the first two academy years. Naruto failed and got held back twice. It was impossible since the Sandame knew that Naruto was smart, smarter than his peers. How and why did the boy fail? However, this question was answered in the following year when Naruto was placed in a class along with the clan heirs. It would seem that Naruto wanted to be people his age so he purposely held himself back since he attended the academy two years early because of a promise. He couldn't help but chuckle at the memory on how the boy performed more than expected of him, stumping the teachers who were already expecting him to have low grades and fail the end of the year test. Oh yes, Uzumaki Naruto definitely had a mind and was already using the age-old basics of shinobi deception to manipulate his way onto a better group. The Sandame was anxious again because of what he discovered a week before. He was in a pensive mood that time and was itching to train his body a bit to get the blood going. He immediately went to his rarely used training ground behind the Hokage Monument for a bit of a warm-up exercise with a clone or two. His training ground, however, was showing signs of use and there were damages all over the place. There were only two people who knew the existence of his hidden hideaway of him because he was the one who made it, and Uzumaki Naruto after bringing the boy there one day to demonstrate a few jutsus since it was the boy's birthday. Judging from the damage, he knew that Naruto was training hard and he could feel different chakra signatures in the area and they were quite fresh too. Naruto was training with someone, but the question was who? Sighing, he went back to his desk and decided to find out what his surrogate grandson was doing and who he was training with. Dog. He called out. A second later, a dog-masked umbu was kneeling in front of him. You called, Hokage-sama, said Dog lazily from behind his mask. Behind the Hokage monument is a training ground I built for myself. I want you to go there and stay hidden, spy on anyone in the area, and report back to me. Clear, the aged leader ordered. Understood, Hokage-sama. Do we have a target? Dog inquired. Yes, Uzumaki Naruto and his training partners. If Dog was surprised, he didn't show it. However, the sudden slight tensing of the man's shoulder was proof enough that the name of the QB Jinchuriki surprised him. Understood, Hokage-sama. Good. 
Dismissed. Dog stood up from his position and melted back into the shadows. Sandame watched the man leave before a sigh escaped his lips. He looked at his table in disgust since it only had been twenty minutes since he finished his latest batch of paperwork and now there was a new batch waiting for him to go through. This was one of the few times in his life that he wished that he was the one to seal the QB so Minato would have to suffer through the hell that was paperwork. Dog, or otherwise known as Hitaki Kakashi, was bored as he stayed hidden using a subtle genjutsu on one of the tallest trees overlooking the training ground the Sandane told him about. Judging from the amount of damage in the area, whoever was using it was quite serious in getting stronger. His target was his sensei's son, Uzumaki Naruto. It was good that Naruto was training to become strong in the shinobi arts. The boy should show quite a lot of promise considering that he was born from two Kage-level shinobi that made IWA and Kumo quake in their proverbial boots. If the boy impressed him then he might take the Sandame's offer of quitting Umbu and take up the mantle of a Jounin sensei. If Naruto impressed him, that is. He solidified the Jinjutsu hiding him when he sensed three different chakra signatures coming his way and coming fast. He couldn't believe the amount of chakra these three had that even his limited sensory talents picked him up. The largest was above Kage level and it was very potent. He knew that this chakra belonged to none other than Uzumaki Naruto, the Jinchuriki of the QB no Yoko. The others were a mystery. One of them had Ohai Chunin chakra level bordering on low Jounin. However, the last one was only at mid Chunin level, but the smooth flow of chakra meant that this person had near perfect chakra control. The last person he encountered with chakra that smooth was Tsunade of the Sanin, and the person who was coming towards him was definitely near the legendary medics level. Dog was floored when he saw Naruto and his companions, and he couldn't help but feel faint when he saw the boy look so similar to his sensei that it was impossible to deny that they were father and son. Naruto was wearing a typical shinobi outfit with a few modifications here and there to make it his own. He was wearing tight black pants and a muscle shirt. Instead of a jounin vest, Naruto was wearing something similar, but it was definitely customized since it didn't have enough pockets for scrolls. Aside from a pair of shinobi sandals and metal-plated fingerless gloves, the most shocking was the Hayori Naruto was wearing. It had red flames on the edges, the Uzumaki symbol with nine writhing tails, looking like a miniature red sun, on his back. Considering that Naruto let his hair grow, bangs framing the side of his face making him the spitting image of the Yandame Hokage. He wondered if the boy knew of his parentage. If not, then the boy definitely was a Minato clone right from the get-go. The next he noticed to enter the clearing was Uchiha Sasuke, which was a surprise since he knew of the boy's attitude towards people after his clan's massacre. He was further surprised when the boy showed a familial treatment and camaraderie with his sensei son. He briefly wondered if this was an imposter or if his stress level was playing tricks on him. Sasuke was definitely showing the prodigious side he was labeled to be. The boy was wearing a white high-collar shirt with sleeves that reached all the way to his wrist wrapped in a warmer of sorts that looked like a wristband. He could see a seal there, but he couldn't make out what it was. He was wearing a pair of loose dark blue pants and a dark purple rope as a belt around his waist, which also supported the Chikuto on the teen's back. Dog recognized the weapon belonging to Sasuke's grandfather, a powerful blade that was said to rival those owned by the seven swordsmen of the mist and his father's, Hitaki Sakumo's, white fang. The last to enter the clearing was definitely Haruno Sakura, judging from the girl's pink hair. Sakura was definitely a kunoichi that Kanoha would be proud of. She was wearing a red jacket covering the mesh underneath. The jacket was tight enough that showed the girl's perfect figure despite being undeveloped considering how old she was. Her pink hair was quite long reaching down to the middle of her back, her bangs framing the side of her face, similar to Naruto, not spiky but rather tamed. Her lower apparel includes a red apron skirt and tight black shorts that stop just above her knee. Instead of shinobi sandals, Sakura was wearing a high-heeled combat boots. Her hands were covered by gloves similar to Naruto, but this one was in red compared to the blonde's black. All in all, the trio was a sight to behold, but a shinobi was more than just looks. 
Dog was practically giddy with excitement as he appeared kneeling in front of the Sandam Hokage with his report. It was going to be a report to give the aged leader a heart attack. Not only was he impressed by the trio's mock spar, their skills would make the current Genin teams pale in comparison. Oh yes, he, Dog, Hataki Kakashi, was impressed, very impressed. He definitely want this team for himself, by hook or by crook if need be. Dog, reporting in from reconnaissance mission, Hokage-sama, said Dog, excitement clearly evident in his voice that made the Hokage raise an eyebrow in question. From your tone, I can definitely say that you found Naruto's training quite a sight, and Dog, said the aged leader in a deceptively mild tone though there was a hint of curiosity there as well. Definitely, Hokage-sama. But before I proceed with my report, I would like to accept your proposition of me becoming a Jounin sensei. Dog said immediately. He wanted to get this done as soon as possible. His future team was at stake. This surprised the Hokage since Kakashi was well known to be lazy when it came to picking out a team. He was given a team two years ago, but they failed miserably in his famed bell test and causing him to return to Umbu once again. This time, it was quite a rare sight to see Kakashi excited in having a team of his own. That's a surprise. I take it that the reason for your sudden acceptance in taking a Genin team is due to what you saw on my training ground, the Hokage asked. Yes, Hokage-sama, agreed Kakashi before letting out a giggle which made the Hokage's jaw drop. Very well. As of now, you're resigned from your post in Umbu. Take off your mask, Kakashi. Kakashi took off his dog mask and placed it on the Hokage's desk. A grin was quite visible from behind his face mask and his visible eye was showing excitement that the Hokage haven't seen in a very long time. Report, Kakashi. Um, before that, Hokage-sama. Can I ask for your permission to take in Uzumaki Naruto, Uchiha Sasuke, and Haruno Sakura in the formation of Team 7 as a frontline heavy-duty assault squad? This surprised the Hokage since Kanoha hadn't had such a squad since Kakashi's time as a genin under Minato. He definitely needed to hear why this three soon-to-be genins made such a mark on the famed Sharingan no Kakashi. Why, he asked, no, urged Kakashi to explain. It's simple, Hokage-sama. The three are way more powerful than their peers. From their spars, and I use the word lightly, each of them are already made to Haichunin in strength. Together, they would become a terror in the battlefield. If their teamwork and skill set is of any indication, I can safely say that they can easily bring down an A-rank Jounin with ease. What? Explain, Kakashi. Now. Let me start with Haruno Sakura. Despite coming from a civilian family, the girl definitely has a mind on her. She could come up with tactics on the fly that would make Anara proud. It would seem that her training with Sasuke and Naruto made her what she is now. She has Mitchunin Taijutsu, no ninjutsu to speak of, but she did one thing that cemented my decision to have her on my team. She demonstrated perfect chakra control that allowed her to perform advanced medical techniques and she has, in some way, replicated Tsunade-sama's super strength technique on a small scale, but I'm sure that it would continue to improve as they train. Saratobi's face showed shock that Kakashi was tempted to rouse the old man and take him to the hospital before he suffered a heart attack. With good reason too, for a civilian academy student to be a powerful medic and replicated Tsunade's strength, this was impossible. Kakashi took the Sandame silence as a prompt to continue, so he did. The next is Uchiha Sasuke. We can throw his psyche profile into the bin since the boy is acting like any regular teen would. I don't see the brooding boy when he was brought out of the hospital after the massacre. He is cheerful and is practically a daredevil in the battlefield. He is well versed in his clan's taijutsu style and his speed is amazing. He has a large repertoire of fire jutsus, but the most commendable skill he showed was his unparalleled use of lightning. He could fire lightning attacks without hand signs and use it with his grandfather's chikudo the same way Asuma does with his trench knives. Kakashi said excitedly, he was on a roll now. Oh, before I forget, Sasuke has a fully developed Sharingan, just in case you're curious. 
Sarutobi didn't know how many more shock he could take and he knew that Kakashi's report on Naruto would practically push him to retirement. He held up his hand to halt the one-eyed Jounin's report, opened a drawer to take out a sake bottle, popped open the lid and took a long drink without bothering with a cup. He took three more shots before placing the bottle on the table and beckoned for the Jounin to continue. He braced himself for the revelation that was to come, his hand planted firmly around the bottle since he knew he would be taking a long drink again soon enough. I don't know what to say about Naruto, but you can be sure that he is definitely Sensei's son. The boy is a wind user, and he has control over it similar to Sasuke with his lightning though his techniques bordered on defensive as compared to the Uchiha. His taijutsu style is perfect, able to switch to offense and defense in a blink of an eye. I also noticed that he trained with weights since he was very fast during their spars. However, the most surprising thing was his use of Kyuubi's chakra. What? shouted Sarutobi before taking a long drink of sake. His nerves were starting to get out of whack. Explain, Kakashi. Naruto can use the Kyuubi's chakra. However, he doesn't show any negative reactions towards it. When he channeled the Bijou's energy, I immediately uncovered my Sharingan to stop it. However, it wasn't needed since the boy handled it like a pro. Heck, there wasn't even any visible sign he was using Kyuubi's chakra. I felt it and I only saw it when I used the Sharingan. What did he use it for? The Sandane curiously asked. He made a mental note to pen a letter to Jiraiya to return to Kanoha immediately and have him check Naruto's seal. He stiffened when he realized that Naruto already knew of the Kyuubi. He definitely needed to have the Toad Sage back as soon as possible. He created three Kage Bunshins and injected Kyuubi's chakra into them. I think the reason he did so was to make them durable since they lasted all throughout the one-hour spar, taking hits and returning them without dispelling. Kakashi said dryly. He, he knows the Kage Bunshin? Sandame said shocked. He took another drink. Thankfully, he had another bottle since the one he was using now was running low. Oh yes, he can even bring them out without the hand sign. I don't know how many he can make, but he made three easily without signs of exhaustion. Heck, I can barely make three without succumbing to chakra exhaustion. Kakashi mused. Anyway, it would seem that Naruto inherited an ability from QB since he formed a shroud of chakra that covered his body from head to toe, but using Naruto's natural chakra, though this one had a foe like appearance. The shroud of chakra acts as an ultimate defense since any technique the clones hit him with was either repelled or absorbed. The curious thing is Naruto's ability to manipulate the shroud that he could control it like an extension of his body. Sarutobi finished off the last of the sake and threw the empty bottle outside the window, ignoring the startled yelp from a shinobi below. He took the other one from his drawer and started drinking. He finished half of it before he felt his nerves relaxing slightly. Are you sure that QB isn't influencing Naruto? Sarutobi asked immediately, miraculously still sober even from the amount of sake he ingested. Definitely, Hokage-sama. As we all know, Jinchurikis shows a visible sign when they use their tenant's chakra. The most reported case is the Hachibi and Nibi. Naruto expertly used the Kyuubi's chakra and channeling it without succumbing to its power. Besides, he didn't use it in battle, only to make his clones durable. I'm am curious as to how he found out about the Bijou considering no one is be stupid enough to tell him with your S-rank protocol in place. Kakashi theorized. If I was to hazard a guess, he either discovered it on his own, which I find unlikely, or he heard it from a villager as he passed by. Either way, it would seem that Sasuke and Sakura also know of Naruto's status as a Jinchuriki since Sakura mentioned how durable the clones were and Naruto explaining why they were so. They accepted him, Hokage-sama. Sarutobi was inwardly relieved by Kakashi's report. He frowned when learning that Naruto knew of the Kyuubi, much less using the Bijou's chakra. However, finding out that his friends knew of his status as a Jinchuriki and accepted him almost brought tears of relief to his eyes. He decided to have a talk with Naruto after he graduates from the academy in three days' time. 
He was sure the boy would graduate considering that he impressed Kakashi enough to request a team. Good. If you want to shadow them until team assignment, then you may proceed. However, don't reveal your presence as of yet since we don't want them to know that we are on to them. I approve of your request as a team, but I have a few conditions. Saratobi said the last part with an ominous tone in his voice which made Kakashi gulp. What conditions, Hokage-sama? 1. You are not allowed to be lazy. If your team is as good as you say they are, then I want you to train with them every day. I think it's fine time that you get out of your A-rank status and finally take your place as an S-rank shinobi. You will train yourself and team 7. So this means you must always be on time. Agreed? Agreed, Hokage-sama, said Kakashi immediately since he was looking forward to sparring with his future team. Condition 2. I want you to make sure that they finish the required D-rank. Since this is going to be an assault and frontline combat team, I want them cleared for C and B-rank missions as soon as possible. We will still follow the protocol for 20 D-ranks before a C-rank, so make sure that they get it done in the soonest possible time. Clear. Anything else? Kakashi was getting excited now. Last. But not the least, I want your students to take personalized lessons from people I select. Naruto will be Jiraiya's since only my student can teach him how to control Kyuubi's power and check on his seal. You will take care of Sasuke and make sure that he knows the in and out of his Sharingan. Sakura, on the other hand, will be trained by a medic of my choosing, or if I'm successful, I will have Tsunade return to the village and give Sakura lessons. If what you say is true, then the best person to get Sakura's strength up to snuff is Tsunade herself. Are you all right with this? Kakashi thought about it for a few seconds before nodding. I agree to the last condition, Hokage-sama, but I want to take the lion's share of my team's time. We can make a schedule for their lessons, let's say twice a week, the one-eyed Jounin suggested. Agreed. Saratobi nodded before nudging at the door with his chin. Now get out of here. This has been a long night for me, and I have plans of getting plastered with sake tonight. He left. Sakura shouted to the group who immediately stopped their three-on-three -three spar. Naruto quickly dispelled the clones, mentally assimilating the battle from his clone's point of view, while Sasuke patted the dust off his clothes. You think he bought it? I'm sure he did. Naruto assured her. I'm glad you practiced your chakra sensing technique, Sakura. We wouldn't have found out about the umbu if you didn't warn us first. Are you sure that it's going to work? Asked Sasuke while inspecting his chikudo for any mix on the edge, happy that he didn't find any before returning it to its sheath with a practiced move. He just had the thing repaired last week since it suffered a nick or two while pitting it with Naruto's wind-covered kunai. Quite. I know how Kanoha make their genin teams, and the main requirement is teamwork. If we show the Hokage that we are already a team, then there is a big possibility that we are going to be assigned together without following the great system. If that doesn't work, then I can convince Hokage Gigi to put us in the same team. Naruto said with a cheeky grin on his face. Sasuke shook his head in both exasperation and disbelief. You have balls of steel, dope. I think this is the first time that some called the Hokage gigi Sasuke said with a smirk. Hey, I have you know that he's always been my grandfather. He took care of me after all. Naruto defended himself before huffing. Sure, Naruto-kun. We know that, said Sakura before giving the blonde a pinch on the cheek. Naruto swatted her hand away since the pinch was starting to become painful. Damn her superhuman strength. She was using it subconsciously now. Away, devil woman. Away. Naruto exclaimed before realizing his mistake. He saw Sakura twitching as he edged away from her. Um, Sakura-chan. You know I didn't mean it, right? Naruto. Shit. Sasuke was happily munching on a dango while looking at the scene in front of him. Sakura had an irritated scowl on her face, arms crossed over her chest while looking down at a severely bruised and battered Naruto lying in the middle of a crater by her feet. 
He shuddered since he knew how strong Sakura was. He could feel phantom pain lancing throughout his body as he imagined getting pummeled by the pink-haired girl in Naruto's place. It wasn't a pleasant thought. So, any plans regarding the graduation test? Sasuke asked as he threw the stick towards a tree like a sunbon, spearing a falling leaf along the way before embedding itself on the trunk with the rest of its kin, completing the Uchiha clan symbol he was aiming for. What's the plan about? There's the written exam, taijutsu and ninjutsu portion, and, um, the weapons throwing I guess, replied Sakura as he she ran a hand coated with healing chakra on Naruto's bruised form. She knew that the blonde was already mending, but the boy was definitely unconscious. She placed a hand on his temple and nudged the brain awake with her chakra causing the blonde to groan. Ow, what hit me? Naruto said with a groan. I did, Baka Naruto. Sakura said with a huff before a wry smile crossed her face. She helped his surrogate brother off the ground and patted him free of dust. How are you feeling? Like QB using my body as a trampoline. He muttered under his breath. Now that's a thought. Kurama mumbled in Naruto's mind, finding the idea a fun thing to do to his partner. Hush you. Naruto chided his tenant. What were you guys talking about? Graduation exam in three days' time. Sasuke replied while pulling out three sticks of dango from the storage seal on his wristband and throwing one each to Sakura and Naruto, both catching it with ease. Naruto gave his surrogate brother a questioning look. What about it? He asked before taking a bite out of the sweets. Aren't you curious about the graduation exam? Sasuke pointed out, not understanding why his surrogate brother was unconcerned of the coming exam that would shape their future. I already know what the exam entails. Naruto said dismissively, eating the last of the dango and obliterating the stick with wind chakra channel to his fingers, slicing them to fine pieces. This revelation made Sakura raise an eyebrow at him. Trust me, we're going to breeze through the thing that it's not funny. Do tell. Sakura urged. Let me see. Naruto started, started ticking off the list with his fingers. There's the written portion of the exam composed of a 100 item test on history, mathematics, and the basics of shinobi arts we learned in class. This is followed by weapons proficiency on shurikens and kunais. There's the taijutsu portion where we will be sparring with an academy teacher and to survive for three minutes. Then we have the ninjutsu portion which requires us to perform the basic three, kawarimi, henge, and bunshin. How in name of Kami do you know that? Sasuke exclaimed in surprise. He knew that Naruto was well informed, but he didn't know it was that much. It was like the blonde had a spy network or something. Easy, I spied on last year's graduating class. I used the Kage Bunshin and had it hinge into a fly. Naruto lied, but he did use that combination before in the previous timeline, but they didn't need to know that. Ah. How is your Bunshin coming along? Sakura asked, concerned. He knew that the Academy clone was Naruto's main weakness since he had too much chakra for the illusionary construct. Not good, but I'll pass easily with Kage Bunshin. The rule states that all we needed to do is to perform a clone. Any clone would work. I asked around and I heard an Aburame passing the ninjutsu portion using a bug clone so I'm cool in using a Kage Bunshin. Naruto assured the worried Sakura. Actually, it was in the previous timeline, Aburame Shino using a bug clone instead of the normal clone. Kiba also turned Akamaru into a clone of his which merited a pass in Irika's book. That's good then. Sakura said with a nod before looking up. Judging from the time, it's almost dinner. Are we going to eat outside or you're going to make dinner at yours or Sasuke's place, Naruto? The blonde thought about it for a bit before answering. There was this dish he wanted to try out. Hmm, I'll make dinner. I remember Sasuke telling me that he harvested a fresh batch of tomatoes yesterday from his private garden. Sasuke perked up upon hearing his favorite. I'm thinking of making a dish called spaghetti I saw in a movie once. If not, 
I can always make grilled tomatoes and make a salad out of it or maybe. He didn't get to say anything else since Sasuke appeared in front of them and dragged them out of the training ground towards the Uchiha compound mumbling tomatoes all the way. End of chapter 3 please leave a comment or a review. Reviews and flames are welcome.